Troll Nation, welcome back to Telesplash Gaming. I'm Chris, thanks for joining me today. And before we talk about the content, I wanna make a quick announcement. I'm at 90 subscribers, I believe, as of this video, and growing organically. It's been slow growth, but good growth. And so I wanna do a giveaway to just say thanks for kind of supporting me, subscribing to my channel, watching my videos. I really appreciate it. This has been a passion project. I'm in no hurry to get to a ton of subscribers, but you know what, it's always nice to see it. So I'm gonna do a giveaway. And this giveaway is gonna be the SNES Classic. Now, keep your eyes peeled. The video for this will be out in about a week or two with the rules and regulations. I just went and picked this up at GameStop and has not been opened. So you're getting a brand new SNES Classic Edition. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Now, moving forward with what today's video is about. I was watching this video a while ago and it was a game for the PlayStation 2 and it was Pro Evolution Soccer 2014. And I thought, that game is, like, four years ago we had a PlayStation 2 game coming out. So it got me thinking about the different games for all the systems. So what I did is I went through and checked out all of the last games released for each console in North America. So there are games released later in other regions, but I wanted to check out the North American releases. So this video today is going to be on the last games released for most of the major consoles in North America. I did a lot of research, there was a few discrepancies, so I had to dig deep and kind of figure out which one was which. So for the most part, I hope it is highly accurate. And at the end, I'm gonna go through a couple systems that have some sports games, because I don't wanna show gameplay footage of Madden, we've all seen Madden. So a couple systems, a couple of your favorites, you may not see during the video, but I'll talk about those at the end. So with that being said, let's get into it. Oh, we're gonna start this list off with the old classic Atari 2600. Now, the Atari 2600 had a lifespan of 1977 to actually 1992, which is insane when you think about it. I mean, that is a span of 15 years. So, there was quite a few games, but the last one released in North America was Secret Quest, released in 1989. It was kind of inspired by The Legend of Zelda. You're guy in a space suit, fighting aliens with bombs and trying to protect a space station, kind of going around. You can see it's kind of like a maze setup. You're going in and out of doors, fighting aliens, dropping bombs. So a pretty simple approach. You know, the graphics at the time were pretty good for an Atari 2600 game. Uh, but obviously, if you compare it to some of the stuff that was out at the time in 89 with the Nintendo and like the Sega Master System, uh, it's, it didn't quite hold up. But it was a great game at the time. Uh, it's been on a lot of Atari flashback collections. Moving on to the system that pulled us out of the video game crash of the 80s. And my first system that I ever owned, the Nintendo Entertainment System, had a life cycle of 85 to 95 here in uh, the US. And the last game released was in uh, 94, December of 94, and it was Wario's Woods. And it's kind of a falling block game, similar to kind of like a Tetris, a little more advanced than just the basic Tetris, with colors, and you're matching up that, and you have bombs to blow stuff up. And it was also the only NES game to have an ESRB rating, as the ESRB was just established prior to this game's release. Moving on to the next system that was a little bit unheard of in my neighborhood, and it's the older brother to the Genesis, the Sega Master System. Now the Master System had a life cycle of 86 to 92, so not terribly long, but enough to get some good games in there. And the one that was actually surprising was Sonic the Hedgehog was the last game released for the Sega Master System in 1991. So we all know Sonic, he's had a huge success among many platforms, uh, but this was one of his first ones, the Sega Master System. Another kind of unique system was the TurboGrafx-16, which had a lifespan of 89 to 94. Now, Bonk was a pretty popular side-scrolling, you know, kind of beat him up uh, about a caveman with an oversized dome going around headbutt and stuff. But the game was pretty cool, and Bonk's been around a lot. He actually has a, quite a few games in Japan. But this game was released in 93, and it was the last game in North America released for the TurboGrafx-16. Well, we all know the slogan, Sega does what Nintendo don't, but in this case, uh, they did not hold up because Frogger was released in 98 for both the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. So all that competition and they both went out with a splash. The Sega Genesis was around for a decade from 89 to 99 and the Super Nintendo was in North America from 91 to 99, but they're both released at the same time in 98. We all know Frogger. Great arcade classic. This is an updated version, better graphics, same gameplay, you know, obviously a little bit different, but 
you played Frogger, uh, it's going to be familiar to you. So nothing too exciting, but if you like Frogger, this is definitely a fun one. Now we're going to move into the add-ons for the Genesis. Now the first one is the Sega CD, which was from 92 to 96, and the last game released for this was Demolition Man, based on the movie with the same name. Now, Wirehead, the game Wirehead, came up on a lot of sites saying that was the last game, but I did some research. Demolition Man came out well after Wirehead for the Sega CD, so Demolition Man is, I believe, the correct game for this list. Now, it's kind of a, it's a side-scroller in some levels, and then it's a top-down shooter in others. Um, I think it looks really cool. Uh, I can't say that it was a great game, but it was kind of neat. And there are some live-action cutscenes, which was kind of the Sega CD's big thing at the time. So, other than that, it's just kind of a pretty generic kind of side-scroller, top-down shooter. The next peripheral, or add-on, is the Sega 32X. Now, this only had a couple years... <laughs> on the market from 94 to 96, and the last game for the 32X was Spider-Man Web of Fire. It was released in 96, and it is one of the rarest games for the 32X, and kind of the holy grail for collectors. Um, it's a pretty forgettable action platformer, but its rarity has kind of kept it alive and, and kept its name around for quite a few years, especially uh, recently with, you know, all the game collecting becoming so popular. Alright, after Sega got sick of making add-ons for an old system, they actually came out with the Saturn in 95. So it was from 95 to 98, and the swan song for this system was Magic Knight, I hope I pronounced this right, Ray Earth. Magic Knight Ray Earth. And it came out in December of 98, and it's based off of a Japanese manga turned uh, video game. You basically have a party of three teenage girls, and you are going through, it's an RPG. Um, even though you have three tunes, you only battle with one at a time, I believe. And it kind of got mixed reviews. Some people thought it was a great swan song for the system. Others thought it was mediocre. Um, but it kind of has that Legend of Zelda look to it, the top-down RPG that we're all kind of used to. This next system really needs no introduction. The Nintendo 64 took the world by storm when it came out. I could not wait to get this system when I was a kid. It came out in 96, it was discontinued in 2002, and the last game for the 64 was a great classic Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 released in 2002. It was really just kind of more of the same uh, when it comes to skateboarding games in the late 90s and early 2000s. Tony Hawk was the man and his game was definitely king. Um, this game was great. It was also on some other systems, but if you had the 64 in 2002 and hadn't upgraded your systems yet, then this was a great game to pick up. Sticking with Nintendo, we're moving right into the Wii, which was released in 2006 and just got discontinued last year in 2017. Now, the most recent game is Rodea the Sky Soldier, which was released three years ago in 2015. And you play as an android with the ability to fly. It was also released on the Wii U and the uh, 3DS. Now, of the three consoles or systems, the Wii version is considered the best one and is the only one that really got good reviews. So with that being said, Just Dance 2019 did get announced and it's going to be released on the Wii, they say, in October. So. Until that gets released, Rodea the Sky Soldier is still the last official release for the Nintendo Wii. I know I skipped a few consoles, but we're going back. Now, these consoles had pretty generic sports releases. The PlayStation, released in 95, had a lifespan until 2006. And its last game, its swan song, was FIFA 2005. The Dreamcast, which had a short lifespan, but has been a cult classic ever since it's been discontinued from 99 to 2001 and its last release was NHL 2K2 but they did have a game come out in 2009 from Goat Store Publishings called I Ride Master of Blocks but it wasn't really mass produced so I wasn't sure if I should include that as the last game or not. The PS2 from 2000-2013 its last release was Pro Evolution Soccer released in 2013 and then next up is GameCube from 2001-2007, its last release was Madden 2008, and Xbox, last but not least, its last release was Madden 2009. Alright guys, what'd you think? Were there any surprises on there? Was there a game that came out so much later that you couldn't believe it was coming out for that system? I hope so. I know what you're thinking also. Hold on, there's still games being made for these systems. That's true. There's a lot of ROM hacks, there's a lot of independent developers, guys that are making games for Nintendo and everything else. These are the ones that were released in store that we can go pick up. So I don't want to discredit those guys that have amazing talent that are still making games, but these are the ones that are generally commercially released. So with that being said, guys, as always, thanks a lot. Please like, comment, subscribe, and 
Check out the video in a week so that you can win your Super Nintendo Classic. Keep trolling.